In this video, I'm going to show you how to model this cookie and how to add a nice procedural material to make it look super yummy. So if you're interested, open up your blender and follow me. Also, let me know if you want to see a tutorial about any of these props in the future. And now, let's get started. I will start by adding a cylinder. Open up this little box and change the vertices to 36 and the cap field type to triangulate fan. Let's zoom in to our mesh with the numpad period key and after that enable the move gizmo which will make moving things around a bit easier. Let's scale the cookie down on the Z axis and then apply the scale with Ctrl A. This is very important. Go into edit mode with tab and then select both the top and bottom faces then insert them twice. Select every other edge around the cookie then press S for scale and shift Z to scale only along on the X and Y axis. Now select only the top faces in the center, extrude it down and inset it twice. I think we are ready to drop a subdivision surface modifier on the cookie with three levels. Press right click and shade it smooth to get a nice surface. The final thing I want to do is to create a sharper edge in the center, so select this loop and bevel it slightly. Super nice! For the jelly, I added a new UV sphere, scaled it down, then I deleted the bottom half of this sphere, then I also scaled it down only on the Z axis to make it more flat. Let's shade this smooth, then add the level 3 subdivision surface in the modifier panel, and then add a displacement modifier as well under the subdivision surface, then click on the new texture. If you click on this button, it will take you to the texture properties where you can edit the displacement texture. Let's rename it to Jelly, then pick the cloud texture from the drop down menu. Now let's go back to the displacement modifier because it's too strong at the moment, so let's decrease the strength to something like this. Back to the texture settings and increase the size of the texture by a little bit. Ok, the modeling part is basically done, so let's rearrange the interface a bit. I change this window to the shader editor where we will create some nice procedural texture for the cookie. Select the cookie, then create a new material. Now before we create uh, some shaders, I change the viewport to rendered and in the render settings I change the engine to cycles, check the noise with 50 samples Change the device to GPU and under color management I like to use the medium height contrast and under film I like to enable the transparent background. Alright, that's it for the render settings. Let me just quickly disable the scene world and pick a nice HDRI light for this project because I don't want to create any light setup for this tutorial so what I'm doing here is only for showcasing this cookie and it will not show up on your render. So if you want to create a render, I advise you to create some lights in the scene. Let's get back to the shader editor. I want to create a gradient base color first, so the cookie's bottom part will be a bit darker than the top of the cookie. To achieve this look, I will use a simple wave texture so press shift A as you would normally do in the 3D viewport and then type in wave texture. And for the sake of organizing stuff, I will also add a frame from the layout menu and simply put the wave texture into the frame. Then at the side panel, I will give it a base color label. For the next part, I will have to enable the node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have it enabled already, just go to edit, preferences add-ons and search for the add-on. It's great, makes our lives easier 
It's free, ships with Blender and everybody using it. When you had it enabled, select the wave texture and simply press shift ctrl T and this add-on will automatically create a mapping node and a texture coordinate which we will need in the future. We also need a color ramp, add it in and plug the factor to the factor slot. Now if you select the color ramp and press shift ctrl T, we can preview this node setup. This is also a feature of the node wrangler add-on that we enabled previously. Let's set this angle to Z and lower the scale value until you get a nice gradient on the cookie. To finish up this node group, we only have to change the color ramp's colors. I use the darker brown color on the bottom and a lighter brown color on the top. Now simply plug the color into the color socket and preview the principled shader with shift, control and left click. This is how our shader looks like at the moment. Now we will create the sugar coating on the cookie and for that I search for a noise texture. So let's press control T and add a mapping node to that. Let's preview the nodes and switch the coordinate to object instead of generated. Then increase the scale to a higher number and also max out the details value. We also need a color ramp here, so let's add it between the noise and the preview node. Then move these two sliders closer to each other, like this, so we will have a more defined noise texture. Now I want to mix the base color group and the sugar coating group together. And for that I will use a mix RGB node. Let's plug the sugar node group to the first color socket and the base color group to the second socket. Now we have sugar all over the place, which we don't want. We want to define where the sugar should be visible on the cookie and that is only on the top center. For that we have to plug a mask information into this factor input that we will tell Blender where to show the sugar. So let's create a mask node group. I will use two gradients uh, textures for that purpose. So let's add in the first gradient with a texture coordinate and mapping node and also a color ramp which will help us to define the gradient texture a bit more. Let's plug the factor to factor, preview the color ramp, then switch the gradient type to spherical. We have to use the object coordinate for this to work properly and with the black slider we can now define the gradient texture. So where it's black there will be no sugar and everywhere else where it's white the sugar will be visible on the cookie. But now we have a problem because there is a white area on the bottom as well which we don't want and to solve this problem I'm going to add another gradient to this node group. Let's duplicate this color ramp with shift D and here we can use this existing mapping node. If you preview the color ramp, you can see that it's side to side and we want it to be bottom to top and for that we simply have to rotate the mapping node by 90 on the Y axis. Let's use the color ramp to separate the black area from the white area, so we will have a black bottom part which we will use to cover up the white area in the bottom that we talked about earlier. Now I just want to mix these two color ramps together and for that I will use another mix RGB node. So let's set it up, switch it to darken and increase the factor all the way up to 1. Darken will add all the black areas together, which is exactly what we want, so the only white area is at the top center of the cookie. So now we can simply plug the mask output into the mix RGB node's factor input. And for that to work, simply switch the two colors input. Ok, the next thing what we want to add is another noise texture because we want to create some bumps on the cookie so it's not all that smooth. Here I can steal the sugar coatings mapping node information, simply plug this vector to the pump noise texture vector input. You can increase the scale to a very high value and for this to work we will need a bump node as well. The factor value should go into the height input and the normal to the normal input on the principal shader.
Let's lower the bumps value to 0.3 because it's very strong at the moment. And I also want to make the sugar on the cookie to pop out a little bit. And for that I add another bump node between the already existing bump node and the principled BSDF node. Then simply plug the mix RGB nodes color information into the height input. If you find it too strong, you can always lower the value by any amount. The final touch I want to implement is the subsurface scattering. So I will plug the mix RGB nodes color information to the subsurface color input and increase the subsurface to 0.01. So now the cookie shader is finished. To sum up, we have a base color here. On top of that, we have the sugar color mixed with a mix RGB node. And then we created a mask to determine where the sugar should be visible. And finally, we created a little noise setup for the micro bumps on the surface of the cookie. We only have the jelly material left, which will be very easy. So select the Smash and click on New Material. For the base color, I choose a very saturated orange color, change the roughness to 0.1 and you can also add some clear coat for extra shininess and then transmission to 1 and transmission roughness to 0.8. So this is the final cookie we made. I really hope that you could follow this tutorial and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.